Please join hands across this great, great audience. You that are watching by television tonight, I would like for you to know that you are watching one of the most dynamic and powerful churches that have ever, ever been raised up in the United States of America in Columbus, Ohio. This place is called World Harvest Church. Thousands of people attend this place. And you that are watching by television, I'm not saying you have to come through here to be ready for the coming of the Lord, but I, I recommend that you make a journey to Columbus and hear the pastor of this church preach. Rod Parsley, I wish I was as young as he was and is. Oh, how I wish it. I wish at the young age that he is that I could have had and see that mighty anointing that God has upon his life. And what a young man God has raised up to take America with the gospel. Thank you, Pastor, for letting me be here. Pray this prayer with me out loud and you that are watching by television, join in, everybody. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus we, take we take dominion. We take authority, we take authority over all the powers of the devil. Over all the powers of the devil. devil, get used to it. Used to You're, it. Defeated. You're defeated. You're a liar. You're, a liar. You're the father of lies. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim that tonight every person in this building that knows not Christ will be set free through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. The power of the devil is broken in Jesus' name. The power of the adversary is broken in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Demon spirits must go. The spirit of drugs. Perversion. Homosexuality, homosexuality must be broken tonight be broken. in the name of Jesus Christ Jesus. and everybody shouted amen, amen. and amen. amen well make a little noise for about 30 seconds make about as much noise as you've ever made in your life Hallelujah. That gives the devil a migraine. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated and the Lord bless you tonight. I will never forget hearing the story of a man that came into a church building on a New Year's Eve, panicked, panic-stricken. This man was a backslider. He had been backslidden for a number of years, but he had a godly wife. And he was terrified that he was going to miss the rapture of the church. He was really paranoid over it. So much so that he always asked his wife, even though he allowed her to go to church, be sure and be home at a certain time because 
when I come in from work I just want to know that you're here he forgot on New Year's Eve that the service lasted till after midnight so he told his wife you go on to church thinking she'd be back at 10 but as you know New Year's Eve services always last till about midnight or one in the morning at least traditionally they do he came home about midnight after a night of drinking with his buddies and nobody was there and uh, what had happened was his wife that night was late for church and she had kind of hastily dressed and hadn't quite put everything up the way she normally would so she was running late and just sort of got out of her clothes and left them pretty well where they were and put on her church clothes and went on to church. True story. And when he got home, the same thing about the children, she had had to hurry to get them ready so she just undressed them and quickly redressed them in their church clothes. So when he came home about midnight, <laughs> you're way ahead of me. When he came home about midnight, he walked in thinking she was there and had, would, be, would have been there a long time ago. And uh, of course, he went through the house and that panic set in. She had never been late. And then he ran in there to kind of look more closely and he saw her clothes just laying there like in a little pile and ran into the other room looking for the kids and there were a couple of little piles of clothes there. And he got into his car and went racing to this church where she was going and ran inside the building and of course it was still going on and the preacher was preaching. He never even bothered to say excuse me. He went screaming down the aisle crying out, I've got to give my heart to God. Where is my wife? I can't stand this anymore. He fell on his face. He gave his heart and his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no way tonight that I can preach a message that I'm going to undertake delivering to you tonight. And I ask the Spirit of God to help me today as I've never ever been helped in my lifetime because my knees tremble. Every time when I preach is like the first time. It isn't like I've been doing this for 27 years. It's like the first time. I still walk the floor, stay up all night many times before I go into the pulpit, weep and cry and bawl, paw over it, cry over it, anoint it, do everything I know to do, asking God to help me because I know that my little puny effort cannot accomplish what God wants to be accomplished tonight. And I said this afternoon, how in the world do I even begin to attempt to preach a message on this subject, on the rapture. The Spirit of the Lord seemed to say this so clearly into my spirit. You don't preach it, you just live it tonight. You live in your spirit, man, what you're going to preach. So I'm going to bring to you tonight, as I feel it, exactly the best I can this momentous subject of the rapture and those who are left behind. Anoint me, Heavenly Father, and help me, please. The Spirit of the Lord did something in my life this afternoon. I'm not much of a sleeper in the afternoon. I went straight to the room. I knew he was talking to me still about this message. Instructed me to go to the typewriter, and I did, and I'm not a great typist. And he said, just begin to print and type what you feel. And this is what started. I just want you to listen as I try to live what I was feeling. And I put it on paper. A call comes into the local police station. My child is missing. 
A husband walks out of the room and one minute later he returns and his wife is gone and her clothes is lying on the floor. Thinking about the people in these auditoriums sometimes where we have these meetings that are not Christians, there's a good chance the rapture will take place while I'm preaching. And do you realize if it happens in this place, before you can bat your eye, you will be totally changed into immortal bodies, into royal apparel, and before your clothes can sleek down into the seat, you'll be airborne, catapulted through this ceiling. A police call comes to the downtown station of Columbus, Ohio. Something strange has happened at World Harvest Church. We've gone inside and nobody's there, but their clothes are lying all around. What has happened? Two are working side by side, one disappears. A couple is lying in the bed as they sleep. The husband reaches over to touch his wife, but she is gone and her bedclothes only remain. A church service is in progress. And all of a sudden, without warning, half of the congregation disappears. An old couple driving down a country road when suddenly their car careens off into a ditch. A policeman stops to investigate. No one is in the car. And the only thing in the car are the clothes they were wearing. A nurse runs out of the maternity ward at the local hospital to shout out the news. All the babies are gone out of the nursery. Cars suddenly go out of control on the Los Angeles freeway as thousands of cars are piling up one on top of the other. But no one is in the empty cars. A bus goes out of control as passengers scream in horror because suddenly the bus driver has disappeared. Trains begin to jump the tracks as conductors go airborne. Planes suddenly begin to veer off their courses. Air controllers begin to caution the pilot that he is losing altitude but the pilot does not answer. He is gone. A police emergency is underway at a local cemetery. Thousands of graves have been opened and bodies are empty and gone. Dan Rather breaks in on the CBS News to give an emergency report. I do wish I could just see that of millions that are missing throughout America. Overseas messages are pouring in over the UPI and API wire to tell of the millions who are mysteriously and have mysteriously disappeared. The president is awakened. His emergency council has been called into session over the strange disappearance of millions of Americans. All armed forces are put on alert. The president has declared the nation in a state of emergency until further notice. All armed forces are at their post at high alertness and, and duty. UFOs are suspected. Aliens from another planet have kidnapped the citizens. Scoffers still protest. Panic and riots are reported as millions run screaming through the streets asking the question, what has happened? Where are the missing millions? A backslidden son hears the news on the radio and at 3 a.m. calls his Holy Ghost 
Bible believing, tongue talking, devil stomping mother, only to hear that phone just keep on ringing and ringing and ringing. A rebellious girl hears the news on the car radio, screams to her boyfriend, take me home. Inside she runs to her parents' bedroom, but they're gone. She runs to the younger brother's bedroom that loves Sunday school, but he's gone. A son who said he would never serve God calls from overseas to his aged mother. He laughed at her religion, but he's not laughing now. His dad, whose footsteps he preferred to follow, only answers, to he answers the phone to say to the son, son, it seems your mother is right and not I, for she is gone. She disappeared before my very eyes. Two teenagers curse their parents for not telling them the truth about the Bible. A liberal preacher gets a midnight call from a panicked parishioner. Crying hysterically, she says, Pastor, you told me there wasn't anything to the literal translation of the rapture of the church. A crowd gathers at the local church in a large metropolitan city. It is 2 a.m. The crowds are so great that thousands are standing outside. Dazed and crying, they await their liberal preacher to arrive and explain all of these strange events and explain the missing millions. The pastor walks in. His face is ashen. The look of death is on his face. He stands before his people trembling, unable to speak. A man walks up, his eyes flashing with fire, his body trembling with fear. He, ha he holds his pastor, he holds up to his pastor the Bible and said, you told us salvation was not needed anymore. You said all those people who believed in the blood were just fanatical religious nuts. You said there was no heaven. You said there was no hell. You said Jesus was not coming back to this earth again. Then tell us now, preacher, who do we believe? You are the Bible. Are you ready for this? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 51. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Four weeks ago, I buried my mama. My little Holy Ghost tongue-talking mama. My little 80-year-old mama that got up every day of her life kicking the devil's lights out. My little mama that taught me how to pray when I was that big. My little mama that began to start out praying when I was in a crib. I plead the blood over my child. I want you to know tonight, this, this scripture has new meaning in my life. This scripture has new meaning to me like it has never had before. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Read further. Verse 16, for the Lord himself. This is one assignment he will trust to no one. He's not sending back Michael. He isn't sending back Gabriel. He's sending back himself. For the Lord himself. I want to tell you, blood-bought child of God in World Harvest Church tonight, he's coming back himself. I want to tell you watching the television, he's coming back himself. He's not going to send an angel. He isn't send you, sending Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He will allow nobody. He will allow nobody to go claim his church for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised first. Then we, within we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's where we get our word rapture. It comes from a Greek term, R-A-P-T-A-E, and it means rapture and it means to snatch away, shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, before you can bat your eye, we are going to be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ are going to be raised first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Everybody stand up. Just trust me. Just try it. Come on, you Baptist. Everybody just, you, you'll be glad you did if you'll do it one more time. Uh, do it one more time. We just had our first rapture drill. First. We have had five momentous events since the beginning of that book you call the Holy Word. Creation, when God said, let there be. Genesis 1, when the description given as only the writer can that this whole world was made in the handiwork and the design of Almighty God. The second momentous event was the glorious birth of the Son of God con uh, conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary of the Holy Ghost. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. That's his human name, his earthly name. Christ is his anointed name. Jesus was born. Unto you is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Secondly, the death when he shed his life's blood on the cross of Calvary, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But then the great event, fifthly, was when he arose out of the grave, victorious over death, over hell and the grave, and it was he that said, Behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death. I have the keys of hell. I have the keys of the grave. That's why tonight you can be set free. That's why tonight we're not talking about some Christ that is still in a tomb. Most places where they have Muhammad and world leaders and kings and etc., they go there to visit the place of the entombment of the fallen king or the dead king. It is conspicuous by who is in the tomb. But people travel to the Holy Land and it is conspicuous not by who is there, but by who is not there. He is not there. The tomb is empty. He is alive. The next great event was when 40 days later he stepped out onto the Mount of Olives. And all of a sudden after he said, go ye there, tarry in the city of Jerusalem, be endued with power from on high. And Acts 1 and 8, he said, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. The, you shall receive the power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He didn't finish much of that till all of a sudden earth lost its gravity. And he began to go up and the Bible said a cloud began to receive him out of their sight. But two men in white apparel, one said to the other, Ye men of Galilee, 
Why stand ye here gazing in the heavens? This same Jesus, same one, not another one, the same Jesus that you see go away is going to come again in like manner. I want to say it. Jesus is coming again. The first coming of Jesus Christ, he will come as the Christ in Matthew chapter 24. He will come as a thief in the night. In an hour when you think not. There are two arrivals toward this planet and upon this planet called earth. The first coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be for his church like a thief in the night. It will be with a shout, but only the saints will hear it. It will be with the shout of the archangel, but only the dead in Christ will come forth. And he's coming to take away his children from this planet because the things that are going to come upon this earth, he said, I will not allow you to be subjected to. His first coming will be for his saints and the second coming at the end of Revelation chapter 19 will be with his saints in clouds of glory. First, there is going to be a rapture. I'm sorry if you don't believe it that way, but that's what I believe. Jesus himself predicted it in John 14. He said, if I go away, I'll come again. I'll receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. The Bible said that the disciples and the apostles, they also spoke of it in the great scriptures we just read in 2 Thessalonians 4, verse 18, that the Lord himself shall come. And last but not least, the angels proclaimed it when the two men in white apparel said, why stand you here gazing in the heavens? This same Jesus that you see go away is going to come again in like manner. I'm here to tell you, I believe that the angels of God are being dispatched in greater numbers. And they're going throughout the whole earth. And they're beginning to warn men and women of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Los Angeles Times appeared an article of a man and his wife that picked up a hitchhiker. It was in the newspaper. And the man got in the back seat and in a few moments he announced to the two people in the front seat that Jesus is coming soon. And when they stopped to let him out, they looked back and he was not there. He was gone. There was a man in the newspaper that appeared to a family of three. Nobody knew who he was. He came in through the very wall of the building and he announced, get ready, Jesus is coming soon. And he disappeared. These articles are appearing more and more and more that Jesus is coming soon. I'm here to tell you we are on the threshold of the greatest event the world has ever known and that is the event when Jesus Christ is going to come back to this earth again and he's going to catch his church away. Are you ready? The next important thing that it is important that you remember is the Bible said he is going to come in Matthew 24 in an hour when you think not. When you least expect it. Two shall be in the field. One taken, the other one left. Two shall be grinding at the mill. One taken and the other one left. Jesus said in Matthew 24, two will be sleeping in the bed. One will be taken and the other one will be left. He's coming in an hour when you think not. The scoffer said, where is the promise of his coming in 2 Peter? They said, since the father's sleep, he still has not come. But the Bible said the day will come when men will scoff at and mock the glorious preaching of the rapture of the church but he said it is in that hour that you are to get ready that my coming is even at the door people are saying today look around this is a day of great peace 
This is a gray of a day when governments and leaders are saying this is the era of the peace. 1990 is the decade of peace. Gorbachev is a man of peace. Where leaders are sitting down at conference tables talking about peace. Well, I'm here to tell you, my Bible said that when men begin to speak of peace and safety, then sudden destruction is going to come upon the nation without warning. This is a great indication, my friend, when men begin to talk about peace, don't sit back and take it easy. You better get ready and get your traveling shoes on because the church is about to go extraterrestrial. He's coming. If people believed that the rapture was near, buildings would be packed. You listen to this preacher. If the church believed that we were near the coming of the Lord, you could not hold the people in the churches in Columbus, Ohio. But the majority of churches in Columbus, Ohio and in America on Sunday night are shut down. I want to tell you something. One of the greatest signs is as close as a nose on your face. If people believed, if church people believed that we are near the rapture of the church and the catching away of the church, you couldn't pack the people in church buildings across America. And one of the great signs that indicate we are near the end that people will become accustomed to, to even falling away. They will no longer believe it. But I'm here to tell you that my Bible says, watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to enter the kingdom of God. It isn't a time to become dull and uninterested. It is time to get your eyes open, sir. The signs are telling us Jesus is coming back. I want to make a little statement. This church is on fire. It's why it's packed and jammed. This church is on fire. That's why the power of God's moving in this place. The devil doesn't want this kind of preaching. The devil doesn't want a church that's looking for the return of Jesus Christ. The devil doesn't want a people to get it and man the post of duty. He doesn't want it. He wants us to sit back and say, oh, we've got years and years and years. Well, my friend, let me tell you, he said we're to look for him for in an hour when you think not the Son of Man is going to come. People believed that the rapture was near. Soul winners would be thrust into the streets in numbers like we've never seen it before. If people believed the rapture was near, revival fires would be exploding in every church in America. If people believed the rapture was near, the silly, petty, fussing over trivial, unimportant, stupid things that people have committee meetings over to try and settle, churches are splitting over the color of carpets. Churches are splitting because they don't like the choir robes. Churches are splitting because they don't like the way the pastor combs his hair. Churches are splitting because they don't like the way somebody does this or somebody does that. I'm here to tell you this stupid stuff would stop if men would get back to the reality that we're on the brink of the greatest event the world has ever known and that is the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. It's time to knock off the fussing. It's time to knock off the fighting. It's time to quit sitting around trying to tell each other straighten up like I want you to straighten up. Brother, you take care of your own problem and God will take care of the other and we'll get on to the business of winning the world to Jesus Christ. People believe the rapture was near, prayer warriors would be at their post. If people believe that the rapture was near, missions giving would be at an all time high. If people believe that the rapture was near, dads would become the spiritual leaders of the home. If people believe that the rapture was near, hypocrisy in all of us would cease. If people believe that the rapture was near, are you ready for this? The worldliness would get cleaned up in the church.
I'm going to tell you something. I feel the power of God in this building tonight. Let's clap our hands. I feel the power of God in this building tonight. I'm preaching to one of the greatest audiences in America. It's time the church gets cleaned up. It's time the pulpit gets cleaned up. I want to camp here just for a moment if I may. It's time we quit seeing how close we can live to the world. And it's time how much and see how far we can get from the world and how close we can get to God. time our conversations are cleaned up. I'm going to say it if people believe that we were near the rapture of the church, there is nothing that will purify you like the expectation of the arrival at any moment that you are going to be face to face with the King of kings and the Lord of lords and there is nothing that will keep you pure or pure or as pure as the fact that Jesus said, I'm coming when you least expect it and you better be ready because that's going to be it. I'm here to tell you, if people believe that we were near the rapture of the church, the worldliness would be kicked out of the church, the half-hearted living would be kicked out of the church and we would live outside the church like we profess we live inside the church. It's time to get the mask off. People, I want to tell you something. This preacher is trying to help you. It's time to get the mask off. It's time to get real. It's time to open our heart and say, Holy Ghost, search me. Holy Ghost, clean me up. Holy Ghost, take out all of the, all of the wood and the hay and the stubble. Take out the impurities. It's time to open up. Holy Ghost, set me free. Glory to God. It's time. The devil doesn't want a clean church. The devil doesn't want a pure church. Jesus said that he might present it to himself. A glorious church. I am, honey. If we believe that we were near the rapture of the church, I'm here to tell you, dead churches would get set on fire. I want to say it again. Dead churches would get set on fire if we believe that the king was coming for us at any moment. Amen. This may not come across ki un very kindly, but I don't really mean it unkindly. It's time we have a change in the pulpits. I've said it a million times, it's time we preachers quit trying to play to the crowd. It's time we quit playing to these little special interest groups. I'm gonna say it, it's time we tr quit trying to be all things to all people. God's gonna have a people that draw the line. There's too many people on television that wanna say all the right things. Be all the things to all people. Well, it's all right if they're saved. It's all right if they really believe in Jesus. Jesus loves them. Well, it's all right if they do this. It's all right if they do that. And what they wanna do is make sure that nobody gets mad so we can be all things to all people. But I'm here to tell you, when Jesus comes, he didn't come into town to be popular so he could join the local country club. 
He never preached with the thought of a return engagement. He didn't come in and try and sue the feathers of the Pharisees or those religious Sadducees. He said, boys, here's the way it is. There is only one way that you're going to be born again. And that is through the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. How many believe the Bible? How many believe it's time to take a stand? Clap your hands if you believe it's time to take a stand. Too many puppets. Too many puppet preachers. It's time preachers quit being puppets and start being prophets, declaring thus saith the word of the Lord. This is no time to tiptoe through the tulips. I heard some guy the other day talking on television about, well, I, don't, I don't even know what he's talking about. In this new era of dispensation just as we're be beholding the dawning of a new day just as the crocuses are croaking I thought my God how can anybody that claimed their New Testament stand in the pulpit in such a cataclysmic hour croaking about crocuses brother we live in the day of seals and trumpets we're living in the day of the apocalypse. We're living in the day of absolute. We're living in the day when hell is imminent and heaven is imminent. We're living in the day when man is about to stand at the judgment bar of God. We're living in the day when the church is about to be rescued on the great cosmic ship. The church is about to go extraterrestrial. We're living in a day when there is coming upon this world and upon this planet catastrophe unprecedented in the history of time. This is no time to croak about crocuses. This is a time to preach the un compromising word of the living God and let it go forth like a two-edged sword for the word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing of asunder of soul and spirit and joy I'm not through on this yet Dead churches would be set on fire. Lord, I'm sick of dead churches. I wouldn't go to a dead church. I'd get out of it. If I had to drive 100 miles, I'd get out of a dead church. If they don't preach us from Genesis to Revelation, get out of it. If they don't believe in the blood, get out of it. I, a woman came up to me the other day and said, I just got the news that my denomination no longer believes it requires the blood to be saved. What should I do? I wasn't surprised at that liberal denomination stand. I'm just surprised about what she said. What do you mean, what should I do? I'd say get out of there so fast. Don't let the door hit you in the backside as you go out of the building and don't ever look back because Ichabod has been written over that. You say it isn't trendy anymore to believe in the blood. I ain't interested in man's trendy ways. I'm interested in the uncompromising word of the living God. Let every man be a liar and let God's word be true. I want to say it. I believe in the blood. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in talking in tongues. I believe in the rapture. I believe in the dedicated life. I believe in sanctified life. I believe in living an overcoming life. I believe in the coming of the Lord. I believe in heaven. I believe in hell. I believe in all. Karate Chuck.
You say, I don't like that kind of preaching. That makes two of you mac, neither does the devil. Brother, God's gonna have a church. I said, God's gonna have a church. I said, God's gonna have a church. 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 What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm here to tell you the blood has never lost its power. And in 1990, the blood will reach to the deepest pit and the highest mountain. Hi, Willie. That was my buddy. Oh, pharisaical religion would be kicked in the seat of the pants if people believe that we're on the brink of the catching away of the church. The church would get off of their backsides and begin to man the battle stations. Strongholds of the devil will come down. When the church gets back to living on the edge that at any moment time will run out and what we are going to do, we must do it quickly because we're on the brink of the greatest event the world has ever known and that is when the church gets airborne out of here Jack before my clothes can hit the floor I'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and I like it. It says we're going to meet the Lord in the air. He isn't going to touch down yet. That comes at the end of the seven years tribulation. But he's coming back. You know when it's going to happen? In an hour? When you think not. And these old modern preachers say there's nothing to the blood and there's nothing to sin. There's nothing to the rapture. Wrong. I want to tell you the day is going to come when I would not want to be in the shoes of the man that got up and said there's nothing to the blood and there's nothing to the rapture because hear this preacher the greatest crowd that will ever attend church will be one day after the rapture of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ what to do if you miss it are you ready if you are not ready to meet God when the rapture takes place you're going to be in for the shock of your life so I have brought with me tonight a message for the conclusion of this message on what to do if you miss it And I call this the Tribber's Survival Manual. (laughs) Now, let's understand this. There's a lot of people believe they're going up before the tribulation, some in the middle, some at the end. There's a lot of teaching going on in the nation today in different camps, even on television, that says there's not even going to be a rapture. Don't listen to these voices. You stick to the word. The church 
is going to get airborne. Jesus said this. Notice two things. This is important. Number one, Matthew 24, Jesus said two things. As it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, two different events. First, Noah warned of judgment to come. A hundred and twenty years he preached and said, repent, destruction is coming, no one listened. He preached a hundred and twenty years, he had only his family as converts. Then the second thing happened. He prophesied judgment is coming, the second thing, God took Noah and his family and those on the ark, he hid them in a place of safety. Then judgment came upon the earth and all of the people were killed that were not on the ark. Secondly, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible said even to the day that the angel came in, their lifestyles had not been altered. They were drinking, they were marrying, etc., carrying on, doing every normal things of everyday life, and they were warned that judgment was coming, but they would not heed the warning. The angel came in, took out Lot, took out the residents that were ready, moved them out of the city to a place of safety, and then judgment came. If you think for one minute, I truly believe with all of my heart that the church is going to get airborne before Revelation 16 is unleashed upon this planet. I truly believe that the church is going to be taken to a place of safety. Then those that did not believe or receive Christ will then go through the tribulation. Now, you have missed the rapture. You are now on planet Earth. Number one, this almost may sound humorous, but I do not need, mean for it to sound humorous. Number one, if you miss the rapture, do not panic. That just doesn't make any sense to me. But I've got to say it. Be calm. Hear me close. If you awaken to find out that your loved ones are gone, and you would not live for Christ on this earth, and now then you must go through the tribulation period, it is important, number one, that you be calm and do not panic. When the news of the missing millions reaches the streets, Hear me close. There will be panic. Did you hear me? There's going to be some panic. There's going to be some people that said, I wish I had been ready. When the nursery crib is empty, there will be panic. When people disappear by the millions, there will be panic. When planes start veering off, of their courses, there will be panic. When buses begin to run off the road, there will be panic. When cars start piling up on freeways because people are mysteriously missing, there will be panic. There will be panic. I believe that there is going to be shock. I believe that there is going to be panic. I believe that there will be riots. I believe that there will be heart attacks. I believe there will be strokes. I believe people's hearts will fail them as they realize what has happened and then as they realize what is coming, the Bible said men's hearts will begin to fail them. Disney World will not have the biggest crowd one day after the rapture of the church. Disney World will probably be a ghost town. But don't panic. 
It is important that you control yourself and you listen to what I have to say. Number two, it is important now that you realize that you are living in a period of time called the Great Tribulation. I hear this preacher closely. It's important that you understand this. This is a seven year period that will start from the rapture of the church to the triumphant return of Christ at the end of the tribulation period as recorded in the book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 11. From the moment that the rapture takes place to the moment of the triumphant return of the Lord will be seven years or 84 months. Follow this close and understand it. You would not live for Christ while you were here, and while the church was here, and while the Holy Ghost was here in full power and anointing. So now you must understand that where you are, you are in a period called the tribulation period or the period of the great tribulation. Now this is important. People will ask, can I be saved during the tribulation period? I think a lot of people have preached maybe you cannot, but I will prove that you can. You can be saved. If you miss the rapture of the church, there is still hope. You can be saved. To understand that, you must go to Revelation chapter seven. And you must understand, and I will paraphrase that the Bible said, that there will be people from all tongues and tribes and nations, Revelation chapter seven, verse nine, and Revelation chapter seven, verses 13 through 14. Turn to it if you have your Bibles. It's important tonight that I read this to where you that are going through the tribulation need to understand what your situation will be. And I beheld, verse 11, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and so on, and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000. The verse, uh, verse uh, let me correct myself. I'm in the wrong spot. Let me just do it. Here's what it says. And one of the elders answered saying, verse 13, what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they? And I said, sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, these are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. The verse says in verse nine that there will be people from all nations, all kindreds, all tongues, and all tribes that will be saved during the period of the great tribulation. There will be in fact 144,000 Jews that will begin to evangelize the world. So you can be saved during the great tribulation. The next thing that I want to say to you, it is important now. I got to thinking about this, how strange this will sound for me to say it, but I must say it. I'm even looking into what I need to do in my ministry to make sure that when I am raptured and gone, that the proper authorities in the legal ramifications involved, I want to leave instructions that the tape that I am now preaching will be distributed to the whole world as long as they're able to be distributed. I think that this is important. I think churches like this that believe in what I am preaching needs to make provision after we are gone that there will be tapes and there will be videos of those that are left behind. We're not gonna be here to preach the gospel. Rod Parsley won't be at World Harvest Church one day after the rapture of the church. He's gonna be dancing all over the streets of purest gold in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So the first thing you wanna do if you're listening to me by video or listening by tape is you need to give your heart to God right now. I'm preaching to those that are in the tribulation period and this is what I want to say, you need to give your heart to Christ now, right now. If you will receive Christ as your Savior and Lord right now, he will save you. Every head bowed, every eye closed, pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, Jesus, I repent of my sin. 
I would not serve you when I was on earth and when the church was here and the Holy Ghost was here in power. So I now give my life to you that you will help me. You will spare me. You will give me grace and power to stand. Keep me safe behind the cross and under the blood. I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody shout amen and we believe they will be saved. Now number two, this is important. Gather up, if you're in the tribulation period, gather up all the Bibles as quickly as you can. You better hear this preacher. Soon they will be confiscated. Understand this. Shortly after the Antichrist government takes rule, the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition is in control. The beast takes over. It won't be long till there will be laws so stringent that it will be the equivalent of treason to even be caught with the Bible in your hand. There are still nations that it is against the law to believe in God Almighty. It is against the law to read the Bible. It is against the law in the United States of America to read the Bible in the public school in our own nation. It is important if you are in the tribulation period, quickly, before these government agents are everywhere, gather all the Bibles that you can find and hide them. Now listen close. Number two, this is important. Get your family and close friends together. That's important. All of those that miss the rapture of the church, get your family and your friends together and share your Bible with them. Number three, this is important. It's vital. Read the word like you have never read it in your life. You wouldn't read it like you should before the rapture of the church because had you have read it, And had you prayed, you wouldn't be where you are. I want you to understand that. So read it now. Read specifically Daniel, Luke 21, Matthew 24, and the book of Revelation. Don't only read it, but reread it. Read it until you memorize it. Read it and have it so memorized in your brain that you can just quote it because the day will come when it will be treason to have a Bible. So you want it in your memory and in your heart so you will know what to expect in the events that are just ahead. This is important. Next, pray as you have never ever prayed in your lifetime, start praying. I'm talking about pray until the power of God is in you so strong. I want to say something. We better get back to praying now. The church doesn't pray like it better start praying. People that pray will not be caught unaware. People that pray the devil can't slip up on you. People that pray will not believe a lie. People that pray the devil cannot deceive you. People that move into the realm of the spirit will not be able to be deceived by the power of evil spirits. I'm here to tell you it is time we have a revival of intercession and a revival of prayer. And if you are in the tribulation period, you better learn to pray like you have never prayed in your life and pray and pray and pray. Next, this is important. Set a plan in motion for survival now. Now this may sound funny to a lot of people, but I'm gonna tell you something. This is a recommendation that I have for you. If you are going to go and you are going to live in the tribulation period and that's what you want to do and you're not ready for the rapture of the church, first of all, get yourself a good radio. 
or television and stay tuned to the airways. I'm most sincere because you will see events so bizarre and so unbelievable that are going to happen through this tribulation period that it will be mind boggling. So you want to be able to tune in to find out what all the events are happening and where they are happening throughout the world. Now you may laugh at this, but I'm not laughing and I didn't laugh when I wrote it down. Store water and food. Did you hear what I said? If you're in the tribulation period, store water and food. If you're not going to go up in the rapture and you don't want to serve God now, then you better learn how to store water and food for soon you will not be able to get it. I will explain that later. Secondly, it's important that you cover it for soon water, the Bible said in Revelation 16, will become blood and you want to get pure water for you now and secondly, cover it because of the nuclear pollution that will contaminate the water because there will be nuclear war in the seven years of tribulation. Next, it is important that you get clothing, all types of different clothing, even for cold country. I'll, under, I'll explain it later. So you're going to need clothing for a seven year period. Next, you will need flashlights and batteries and generators and anything you can, study solar heat, anything that you can to learn how to keep your family warm. Next, I recommend that you get out of the city, get into the country, get into the mountains because most likely the control will come last by the Antichrist into the rural areas and the mountain areas and the least populated areas more slowly than in the major cities. This isn't some tale out of Hollywood. This is what's coming upon the earth. You want to go through the tribulation period? I just want to help you get through it. Next, learn survival techniques. Learn how to survive. You better learn how to live off the land. You better learn how to get wood fire started the old fashioned way. You better learn a lot of things about survival. I'm most sincere. If you live in the tribulation periods, have first aid supplies and have them stored for the seven years. And next, this is important, trust no one because there will be secret agents and there will be government agents that will be everywhere to try and find out who you are, where you are, and what you're doing, and if you have bowed to the image of the Antichrist. Next, this is important. Be on the lookout for a man called Antichrist. Now, if you're going to survive through the tribulation and your soul is going to be saved, here's who you're going to have to deal with. The new leader of the world will not be the power of Jesus at that moment. But you see, here's the way it will work. We're in this building tonight and we're worshiping under the banner of the true King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But during the tribulation period, the government church will be a church of antichrist. It will be a false Christ. And the world religion of that day will be just the opposite. The saints, true believers, that are saved during the tribulation period will hide out into the caves and the rocks and the mountains for fear of their own life. And the government church will come together and whatever form of religion that they will have to worship their idols and their image of the Antichrist and the devil they will worship, you will be on the outside and they will be on the inside government church. This is important. I want you to remember it. Let me tell you just a little bit about this man. Watch for a great world leader. And this world leader will probably be so popular during the first year or the second year that everybody is going to call him Mr. Wonderful. Let me describe him. Keep, keep your eye out, though he will not be called the Antichrist, you will know soon because this man will dominate the airways and he will be first of all an international politician. He will cause craft to prosper. Secondly, this man called Antichrist will be a military tactician. He will have all the nations of the world saved, he will say, and protected under his own military umbrella. So he will be saying to the world, I will police it. Thirdly, he is going to be an economic expert. 
He will control the purse strings of the world. There will not be a currency any longer, but there will be a number and there will be a mark. More about that in a moment. And this man, Antichrist, you will recognize him because he will institute a number, which is the number of man at the end of Revelation chapter 13, and it is 666. And the reason it isn't just one six, and that's the number of man, and by the way, that's why the devil is so mad, because he can't be anything but a six, and even impersonating an antichrist, he'll never be anything but a six. That is the number of man, but God is a seven, and when you became a child of God, you move from a six to a seven. So he will have a counterfeit trinity. 666, a counterfeit trinity or an evil trinity, or a satanic trinity to, to counterfeit the Holy Trinity. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, he will have 666. He will have the beast and the false prophet and demonized agents that will represent the Holy Ghost. And he will perpetrate the greatest counterfeit since the beginning of time, and that is the counterfeit of the Holy Trinity, except it will be a satanic trinity. So watch out for the man with the number 666. Watch this. His word will be peace. Yes. Going to give peace to the world. Boy, this nation's ready for that, aren't they? Good old gullible America. We swallow it hook, line, and sinker. We let a man called Mikhail Gorbachev sweep in here that comes from an empire that Ronald Reagan called it the evil empire that under one of his predecessors alone Joseph Stalin where over 20 people of his own he murdered himself and if you think for one minute Mikhail Gorbachev is not a hard line Leninist and Marxist don't be too fooled just because you stick an Italian suit on a man and put new Italian shoes and get all the what right things to say out of Madison Avenue PR people how to touch Americans and we bought it hook, line, and sinker. In one state, they took a poll and he was voted more popular than the President of the United States. Well, I'm here to tell you God is not marching to the drumbeat of Mikhail Gorbachev. Mikhail Gorbachev is only one little rung in God's prophetic ladder. Don't put your faith in treaties signed by man. Mikhail Gorbachev is not the Prince of Peace. There will never be peace on this planet until the Prince of Peace splits the eastern skies and comes back to this earth again. Well, stay with me. This, get, this gets hard here. Let me give you a little history. This man called Antichrist will have a strong physical appearance. What the word says. He will be appealing. This man called Antichrist will be highly intelligent. Though he will have a rather conspicuous beginning before his real public takeover of center stage, his, his, his beginning will be rather uh, inconspicuous. This man called Antichrist will be a man that will have, are you ready for this, a Christ-like personality or charisma. Did you read where one woman said when Mikhail Gorbachev got out of his Russian limo, a computer firm expert, and reached out and shook her hand, quote, I am still shaking, she said. It was like the second coming of the Messiah. That's what an American said. Another woman made the statement that when he touched me, it was like an angel coming down from heaven. Amen. Well, you beware of this man called Antichrist. He will be highly intelligent. He will be a man that will make treaty with the Jews. He will overcome resistance in European confederacy. He will be attacked by the kings of the south. His deadly head wound will be healed up after he has been mortally wounded. He will become a world ruler. He breaks the Jewish treaty. He kills the two witnesses. He usurps divine worship. He persecutes the Jews. He kills 144,000 evangelists. He destroys the world church. He is defeated at Armageddon and ultimately will be cast into the lake of fire burning with brimstone 
But before he gets there, he is going to perpetrate the greatest deception since the beginning of time. Beware of a man called Antichrist and do not listen to what he says because he will have supernatural power. Now this is scary. The Bible said that the very elect are going to be deceived. Now you better hear me. If you're living in the period of the Antichrist days and the great tribulation days, watch out because he is going to have a companion and his pal is called the false prophet. The Bible said in Revelation 13, the false prophet will have great power and cause the earth to worship the first beast. He will make fire come down from heaven. He will deceive by miracles and will cause the earth to make an image to the Antichrist. He will give life to the beast. He will cause the image to speak. He will have all who will not worship the beast to be killed. He forces all to receive the mark of the beast in their forehead or their right hands. And it says both free and bond, rich and small, it doesn't matter. He makes it to where no one can buy or sell unless he takes the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All who refuse are going to be killed. Now right here you're in for a serious situation and pay attention. People say all the time, well, even if I don't go up in the rapture and I go through the tribulation period, I'll just give my head. I mean, even though I couldn't live for God when the believers were on the earth and the church is now gone, but, but somehow I'll get the strength to give my head because here's the fact. You're in a paradox. It's like a catch-22. You're on earth. The church has been taken out. You are now a minority. In the final 42 months of the seven-year period, I cannot describe this. The world will go mad. Insane demonized spirits will sweep the world the antichrist will be a miracle worker and the false prophet will be a miracle worker I remember hearing what a colleague said that a rock promoter said the church the evangelical church has missed it you're nothing but a bunch of religious people now. You had an opportunity to show the youth of America real power, but you've let it down and you're just a bunch of religious people having the form of religion and no power. He said, we are going to show the youth of America what real power is. We're going to introduce them to the occult and Satan's power, and we're going to teach them the ways of the new age, and the church has had their day and it is over. We are going to show them real power. And let me tell you something. The Bible said that the beast is going to have power and the false prophet will even raise him up. He will do miracles. He will work wonders and watch this. He will approach people from a spiritual point of view and he will deceive them. And if you're not staying close to God during that tribulation period and on your knees and reading the Bible, you will be pulled in. So here's the problem. If you worship the Antichrist and you join in league with him, your soul is damned forever. If you do not join the Antichrist, then your head is going to be taken. You will most likely be imprisoned, tortured, and then beheaded. That's what the word says. Then you have another problem. If you do not worship the beast or the image, then you're going to be killed. If you do worship him, then your soul is damned forever. Then you have another problem. If you do not receive the mark of the beast in your forehead or in your right hand, you cannot buy nor you cannot sell. The Bible said that means the rich and the poor, the great and the small, the free and the bond. It will involve every person on this planet that this network of governmental agencies run by Antichrist will reach into every corner of the globe and no man, the Bible said, the false prophet will institute it. No man will buy or sell.
you go into the store and you say I want to buy a loaf of bread suddenly you have a new storekeeper or maybe it's the same one but he now is different he says to you what is it what do you want bread here it is well let me see the mark it's what the Bible said read it Revelation 13 he says let's see the mark what mark well don't you know the new rules handed down by the government agency you can't just come in here and buy anything anymore you've got to receive the mark what mark well let's see it's got to be in the forehead or in the right hand well I'm not going to do that and then you know why though you don't tell him so you go back and you think well I'll scrounge around I'll find a few things I'll, I'll, I'll grow some tomatoes maybe I've still got something I've canned and pretty soon you keep going and going until you're out of food and, and births will take place and marriages will take place during the tribulation period and children will be born so suddenly you've received Christ and you've said I'm not going to join the league of the Antichrist I'm not going to live under the power of Antichrist I'm not going to take the mark I'm not going to worship the image but then one day your child comes up to you and says daddy I'm hungry daddy I have nothing to eat daddy there's nothing here to eat please help me I'm starving so you go back to the store and you try to appeal to this man and hope that he will listen and hope that he will pay attention and hope that he will he will just see through all of this and maybe make an exception on your behalf but here's the one thing you must understand he's not going to be touched by your sob story he doesn't care that your child is starving to death he doesn't care that you need medicine from the drugstore that your baby is burning up with fever he doesn't hear you anymore with the ear of compassion do you know why because he is a government agent he is demonized by the power of hell the agency has now gone into every part of the world and it controls everything that touches every mankind and suddenly there is madness upon the earth you cannot buy you cannot sell you cannot eat you cannot have gas you cannot turn on electricity because it's all controlled by the agent are you listening to this preacher please do please listen to me before I close please hear the final moment it's urgent You're damned if you take the mark with God and you're damned with the Antichrist if you don't. And that's your dilemma. But now here is what I want you to hear this preacher. I hear people say this. I think it would be not only truthful but accurate. I hear it all the time. Don't talk to me about this fear of tribulation period. I'm not worried about it. A man said to me just when I was in Michigan, I'm not afraid. I said, why won't you give your heart to God tonight? Well, he said, I don't have time tonight. I've got things to do. And besides, quote, I will lose my friends. And I said, sir, but you tell me you have fear of losing your friends here to serve Christ but you tell me that you will have the courage to stand up against a hissing murdering torturing government and agents of antichrist you realize that the greatest slaughter of humanity in Revelation 16 in the period of the Antichrist that will take place on earth will not be the slaughter by irreligious men this slaughter the greatest slaughter in the history of mankind will be by religious men Revelation 16 says 
that they will turn on those that have received Christ and they will murder them. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. They will be beheaded. They will hate you. And do you realize this hate is so rampant and so deep? Do you know why? Do you know why it is not only the desire, hear me, of the Antichrist to damn your soul to hell. He wants to humiliate you. He wants to pull you down. He wants to torture you. He wants to make you suffer. He wants to make you denounce Christ. He wants to make you recant. He wants to make you turn your back upon Jesus and he will exercise every power he can of torture to persuade you. Hear me. You need to read Fox's Book of Martyrs. You need to read what haters of God do to lovers of God. You need to, re need to read the creative ways that they have of dismembering the body. You need to read Hebrews 11 that they threw them into dens of lions. They, they, they gored them with bulls. They sawed them in two. They tortured them. They, 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 they pulled their bodies apart and dismembered them. They used every force of torture to get men to renounce Christ. And that's what will happen during the tribulation period. It will not be a cakewalk. It will not be a Sunday school, a, a Sunday afternoon picnic. It will not be a stroll in the park. You're talking about a mad dog. You're talking about a devil that hates you. You're talking about a devil that hates you because you are the object of God's affection. And since he couldn't pull God down off of the throne, and since he couldn't defeat Jesus Christ, he's going to take out all this pent up emotion and hate upon you. Hear this preacher. Teenager, if your mother and dad will not serve God, you serve God. You can do it. If your friends won't serve God, you serve God. If it costs you your buddies, you serve God. Young lady, if you have to walk alone, keep your life pure, you serve God. Mom and dad, if your friends all forsake you, serve God. If your family deserts you and writes you out of your inheritance, you serve God. It will be worth it all when you see Jesus. <laughs> serve God. And last, get ready to die. Because that's the way you will be spared in the tribulation period. They were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ. It won't be some great crowd cheering you on saying, you can do that. It won't be masses of Christians around like a great arena shouting to you, don't recant, don't give up, you can do it. No. They're going to brainwash you. They're going to pull you down. They're going to use your children against you to renounce Christ. And whole family is put before a firing squad in Fox's Book of Martyrs. And they walk over to the dad before they blindfold him. And then they blindfold him and then they take it off. And next to him are his children and he had four and his wife. He had just said, I will not renounce Christ. Then they turn those rifles toward his family and said, now if you will renounce Christ we will set you and your family free but if you will not renounce Christ we will murder them before your very eyes what would you do? What would you do in another story of Fox's Book of Martyrs where they literally dismembered and pulled the arms off of children to get their parents to renounce Christ? Would you give in to the screams of agony of your child that is saying, Daddy, help me? 
You said, Dwight, really, isn't this a little melodramatic? My friend, I don't have the capability to be dramatic enough to describe what is going to happen. But they will use every pressure. They will use every pressure they can. They will use your family. They will use every torture they know how to get you to curse God and take the mark and denounce Christ. And that family turned and screamed at that dad, save us! And the father could not let his family die, but he lost his soul. But another story in that same book says that when they brought the little seven-year-old lad and they tied him to the stake and put the, put the fire under him and began to, before they set it aflame, they turned to the dad after they had tortured him, after they had, had bruised him and hurt him and he still would not renounce Christ. They turned and said, now we will burn your son at the stake, but if you will renounce Christ, he will be saved. And the father looked up into the heavens and said, oh God, help me to be strong. You will cry out with the greatest pressure during the tribulation period. Oh God, help me to be strong. And that little lad turned toward his daddy and said, daddy, don't renounce the name of Jesus. Daddy, don't recant. Daddy, don't turn your back upon the Son of God. And they put the fire to the child. And the child screamed, Daddy, don't cry for me. I see heaven open and Jesus is coming back for me. If you want, and if you can't live for God now, what makes you believe? You will stand for God in the great tribulation. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want every Holy Ghost filled person in this building for 60 seconds to lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Every eye closed, nobody in this building moving. Lift your hands please and pray in the Holy Ghost aloud all over this building. Spirit of God. I'm going to make a very difficult statement. It's difficult for me to make it. It will be difficult for you to hear it. If you will not serve God now, now let's be reasonable. If you want serve God now, I truly doubt you will even come close to being faithful to God through seven years of horrible tribulation. And I will tell you why. The church is here now. We will be gone. 
The Holy Ghost is here without measure now. He will not be able to function the same way in all of his offices then as he's able to now. You have the encouragement of the body of Christ. There you will be alone. True, it will be scattered all over the world and there will be a great revival. But my friend, listen to me. I'm not making this saying that this is what I truly believe, but the Bible said he is going to appear to those that are looking for him. If you're not looking for him, there is a good chance you will not be ready when he comes. If you are not looking for his glorious return to catch us off of this planet, then what leads you to believe with the appeal of the Holy Ghost now, with the preaching of the word going out now, with the appeal of the Spirit now, with the wooing of the Spirit of God now, with this message speaking to you directly now, with the Holy Ghost talking to you now to give your heart to God, with everything that has been done throughout the years and years to get you to God, and you still refuse. What leads you to believe you will give your heart to God during the great tribulation? If you are not strong enough now to say no to the pressure of your peers and the inconvenience of losing your identity with your buddies, what makes you think you're going to be, see, be such big tough guy to stand up to those that are going to use every measure of torture to get you to denounce Christ during the tribulation period I have a better way get ready tonight and you can escape the whole thing give your life to Christ tonight Come back to God tonight. Come to God now. And you won't have to worry about it anymore. Because then you'll be ready. That in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, our king is going to come back. And he's going to catch away his church and his children. And the graves are going to pop open. And my mama's coming out of that grave. And my baby brother's coming out of that grave. And your loved ones that are born in Christ are coming out of that grave. And we will be called up to meet the Lord in the air. And you will avoid the tribulation period. Holy Ghost, give us the greatest miracle of soul winning we've ever had. In the name of Jesus, I bind the powers of the devil. I bind the powers of the devil. I bind the powers of the devil. Look at this preacher. No heads bowed, no eyes closed. If you're going to come to Christ and know you're ready for the rapture, you're not going to get saved in some little old wimp altar call. I'm sick and tired of everybody presenting Christ like something they're ashamed of. My Jesus is not a grotesque monster. And anybody that says close your eyes and bow your heads, lift your hands, nobody will see it and nobody will ever know is an insult to the integrity and the power of Calvary. Jesus died openly and boldly and he died for you and me and you're going to have to come to him the same way. If that homosexual crowd can come out of the closet bragging their home homosexual it's about time born again children of God get out of their closet and shout it from the housetop the king is coming I said the king is coming the king is coming listen close I want every man every woman I've never felt a greater anointing in an altar call that says Dwight Thompson get to it 
do you realize he could rapture us out of here before I even finish this call I better hurry I mean that I better hurry I've had him run the aisles screaming you're taking too long and I'm afraid I'm gonna die before I get saved and well, I want to tell you if that's what's happening in your spirit you're on the right trail but let me tell you something right now and I want to hit it hard there's a little word the devil is using on you right now and that little word is tomorrow don't pay any attention to Dwight Thompson you can get saved tomorrow he's playing with your head he's playing games with you well I'm here to tell you tell that lying devil to shut up the Bible said now is the day of salvation now is the day to be born again now is the day to back to, to pull down the powers of the devil in your life now here's bottom line no phonies will answer this altar call no heads bowed no eyes closed doesn't matter what anybody thinks you've done who cares it matters what he thinks I want every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, hear me. I'm not talking about receiving a little blessing. I'm talking about you're saying, Dwight Thompson, get to it, man, and hurry up. I want to know that I'm ready, and I'm not sure I'm ready. But I want to be sure that if the rapture happens tonight, I'm ready. And it may the Bible said in an hour when you think not the son of man is coming it may be tonight it may be before the sun arises in the morning it may be before we get back here tomorrow night it may be sinner backslider you that have never confessed Christ as Savior and Lord and if you are going to be born again, this is mandatory. It is compulsory. You must confess Christ as your Savior and Lord. Jesus said, if any man will confess me before men, I will confess you to the Father. But he said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you to the Father. Everybody straighten up. Get your head up. Get ready to see a miracle. The devil's going to lose again. He's going to lose again. When I count to three, I want everybody in this building that says, Dwight, I'm a sinner. Dwight, I'm a backslider. Dwight, I'm away from God and I know it. I'm not playing church. I don't care what anybody thinks. I do not want to go through the great tribulation. I want to be ready when Jesus calls us home in the rapture. If you want to know it and you're not ready, or you're not sure you're ready. No games here tonight. When I count to three, I want you to raise your right hand up as high as you can get it and hold it there just like that. Thank God hands are going up. When I count to three, I want you to raise your right hand up as high as you can get it. I haven't counted yet, but when I count to three, I want you to do that. Don't you dare do this. Don't you dare throw up a little hand like you're ashamed of it. If you're a backslider, if you're a sinner, or if you are not sure you are ready to meet Jesus Christ and you want to be sure, if you will raise your hand, I'm going to lead you in a prayer that when you walk out of this building, you're going to know Thank God you will know every sin is under the blood. And you're ready. You that want this prayer all over this auditorium, 
in every section of the church all over this building way up in the bleacher area thousands of people here I want everyone that says Dwight I'm not sure but I want to be sure I don't want to go through the tribulation I want to know my sins are forgiven I don't want to miss the rapture if you want to know you're ready that man in the back won't dare even take his hand down. I want, you to, I want you to raise your hand all over this building if you want this prayer and you want to know you're ready right now in the name of Jesus when I count to three, raise your right hand and do it now. One, two, three, raise it up. Do not take it down. Raise it up. Every one of you that has your hands raised, if you're sincere, you will do this. When I count to three, only those with their hands raised get out in the aisle and come and stand in front of this preacher and I'm going to lead you in the prayer that will change your life. Only those with their hands raised come. One, two, three. Come on. Right now. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Something is terrifying me, and I must tell you what it is. I will ask nobody in this building to move until we have completely dismissed this meeting because the Spirit of God is moving, and this is a matter of life and death. We will sing this song one more time, and hear me. Some of you almost stepped out. Some of you almost gave your heart to God. Some of you almost committed your life to Christ. Some of you almost had the power of Satan broken in your life. Some of you almost made it. But almost with God is the same as never. Almost being a Christian will not save you. You must come. If you want this prayer, you started to step out and the devil made you stop. Don't let him do it again. This may be your last call. Final time we will sing it. Step out and come as we sing. I surrender. Yes, come on. Yes, come on. They're coming. God bless you. They're coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
There's somebody in this building that the Spirit of God is directing me to say, if you don't come, this may be your last chance. I'm not saying it definitely, but I feel it strong enough to utter it. It may be your last chance. I'm not saying that it is, but it may be. I feel a caution here in my spirit to warn people that the more you say no to God, the harder it will be to come to Christ. And my friend, if you won't come now, I doubt you will come to God during the great tribulation. Come now and be ready. Come one more time. I surrender. We're waiting on you. Somebody in this building, God sent you here tonight as, 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 as certain as if an angel came down from God out of heaven and came straight to you and said, I'm sending you to this church tonight to get saved. There's a young man in this building tonight that God sent to this church to get saved and you haven't come forward. There's a young man tonight that there has been a prophecy over you that you better get saved and you better get saved now because danger is in your path. And you know who you are. And if you go out of this building without Christ and you reject Jesus Christ and you turn your back upon Christ, the day will come you will give anything in your power if you could change that situation, but it'll be too late. Whoever it is, young man, God sent you here that the power of the devil will be broken in your life. I urge you, come to Christ. Christians pray. If you know who it is that needs God, I want you to go get them. Sing it one more time. If you know who it is that needs God, go get him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're coming here. They're coming here. One more time. We're now going to pray. We're going to pray. Everybody listen. Hold steady. Listen. Listen. You may walk out of this building and you said, well, it didn't work. Thompson didn't get me to come to God. Listen to me. Listen to me, young man. Listen to me, Dad. 
You walk out of this building and you feel like Mr. Tough Guy, don't you? You spurn the mercy of God. You laugh in the face of the cross. You think all of this is gibberish. Well, the day will come you won't laugh anymore. And you'll give anything in your power if you could come back to this night and come to this altar. Because, sir, when you reject Christ, your heart gets harder. Every hand lifted. It isn't too late. I'll wait 15 seconds. If you'll get out of your seat and come forward. If I even see you coming down the aisle, I'll, here comes a man running down the center aisle. God bless you. Did you see that young man? He ran to this altar. He wants to be ready. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to say it in advance. Pastor, we are now ready to have a camp meeting like we've never witnessed. You know why the Lord led me today to preach like I preach? Because now then we have approximately over 500 people that are now ready for a Holy Ghost camp meeting because their souls have been born into the kingdom of God. Every hand lifted. This is what you do before God. This means I surrender. You that are watching by, tele by television at home, lift your hands. Now all over this building, out loud. Pray this prayer out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I've, heard the I've heard the message. I do not want to go to hell. But I want to be ready to meet Christ. I renounce Satan. And I confess that Jesus Christ is the Savior of my life. Come in, Lord Jesus. I confess Jesus Christ is the only Son of God. Devil, no more. Devil, Devil, I renounce you. I renounce you. Devil, Devil, get out. Get out. Jesus, Jesus, come in. Come in. Wash, my Wash my sins away. I am now, I am now born, again born again through the blood, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus. And I am ready, I am ready. For, the for the rapture. Thank you, Lord. I'm saved. I'm saved. Well, shout. Everybody shout.